on the subject of practicing. Two years ago, I decided to try for my certification, and I wasn't sure if I was going to try uh, for my stroke work or for my other one. And so what I did is I took a challenge with another artist, and we said we were going to do a practice sheet like this every single every single day. Okay, so I did, this was on February 28th in 2008, I did practice sheets with various brushes, liners and rounds, um, just to get my stroke work better and better. And I just, every day, just played around, made butterfly motifs, did all kinds of things like that, and just practiced. I circled what I liked, I marked what I didn't like, Okay, use different color paints, use piece of paper, and I dated them. And I think that this is tremendously important because if you date them, I can go back at this, I can go back and look, wow, two years ago, look where I was. And put them in a file, just keep them. Okay, then I mailed one of these out to um, the gal that I took a class from. She's an MDA, it's Sue Pruitt, and she said I could share this. I mailed one out to her because she had taught the class about under, understanding certification. And I really thought that that would be um, just a, a fun thing, just to mail it to her, just saying, hey, you know. And she graded it. It was, was totally fascinating. I just love that she did this. So she showed me which ones got A pluses and which ones were like, what the heck were you doing? Um, too much tail, not enough tail, frowny faces, uh, ew. Um, we've just got all kinds of, of fun stuff. And, um, and and it was really a neat thing. So this is like a just for me, it's just an excellent memory. But it's also a really good lesson. You might even try getting um, having friends of yours exchange different stroke things that you've done, and that way you will improve because you're kind of peer pressured into it. Okay, as we get ready to paint and learn how to do our lining or learn how to drastically improve our painting, um, the first brush that we're going to talk about is going to be our liner brush. Liner brushes are very important that they are the right length. If you have a really, really long liner brush, you're not going to be able to make pretty lines because lining depends upon your brush being in the right position. Okay, so if you're not in the right position, then you're not going to be able to make a good line. And what the right position is, you can't free float. Like, see how my hand isn't anchored and nothing is anchored. Um, if you don't anchor your hand, then you're going to have wiggly, weird lines. If you anchor your hand, then you can make your line do whatever you need it to do. You can do squiggles, you can glide your hand along, you can brace it using your pinky, which is um, something that a lot of people were taught when they were learning how to oil paint and things. I wasn't taught that way. Um, I anchor myself on the, the heel of my hand. Um, and the more plunge you have, I can see why people would paint up here on their pinky. The more plunge you have, the more control you have. However, that just doesn't do my thing, but whatever floats your boat, you just go for it. So, but I'm going to anchor my hand using the heel and using my pinky, okay? And you can also use a bridge. A bridge is something that, I'm trying to see if I have something around here. We use our tape roll. If I put my hand on something stable, not the tape, the tape roll, then I can still anchor it down here on the bridge, um, on the heel of my hand, and I can still make my controlled movements. It gives me just a little bit more control. So sometimes using a bridge or a piece of wood across a project is a good way to get extra control. With a liner brush, the most important thing is going to be um, putting water in your brush. If you do not have water, water in your paint, sorry, not water in your brush. If you do not have the correct amount of moisture in your brush, then the paint won't flow. If you think about your, your um, brush as like a soda straw where you plug the end, and then the paint feeds out of the end as like, you know, as you touch it or as it hits the surface. That's what your liner brush is like. So with the liner brush, you're going to add a little bit of water to the front part of your puddle and then you're going to drag in just a little bit of paint. Um, you want it thin, inky consistency. You don't want it heavy, milky, kind of like heavy cream. You want it a little bit thinner like ink. You want to fully load your brush absolutely fully load it all the way up to the ferrule okay you're going to use a good brush cleaner when we're all done we can use the the um, brush cleaner and restorer and that'll take everything out so we don't have to worry about paint getting up there and drying i don't like any moisture on my ferrule so i wipe that off okay so then we're going to come over here and we're going to get ready to go all right the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to load our brush just like we just talked about get my glasses on 
We're going to load our brush and we are going to, we're going to start our drills. We're going to work at this for 10 minutes. Even if it doesn't take you 10 minutes to do the strokes, what I want you to do is keep going until you have practiced for 10 minutes. Okay. So we're going to load our brush, dry off our ferrule. The first thing that we want to talk about is we're going to have you just go in a little bit closer. Our posture of our brush is very important. Okay, notice that the posture of my brush is straight up and down. If I was doing a pencil, it would be down here. Okay, what we don't want to do is we don't want to do a pencil grip. We want to be standing straight up and down on our brush. Okay, so I'm going to take my posture and I'm going to practice making thin lines from the top to the bottom and releasing. Okay, put my brush down, even pressure. Put my brush down, even pressure. I'm pulling towards myself. Okay, put my brush down, even pressure. It's important to breathe when you're doing this. If you're not breathing, then um, you're going to have um, weird wobbly lines. Okay, put my brush down, even pressure. Even, even, even. Now, if I do too much pressure, then I'll be thicker, which could be another whole exercise, right? You could practice doing thicker pressure lines. I can't say that two times fast. Okay, so we'll press. Okay. And I've drawn lines on my paper so that um, this will be something that, you know, I will stop and start here on these lines. Okay, so I'm evenly going, even. I don't want to apply pressure and lift off and lift off and lift off and lift off because then I'll get a bad line. Okay, that's not a good line. Okay, got a little fluff on the end of my brush. The reason I included the brush in these lessons is so that you are sure that you're going to have a brush that is a consistently good behaving brush. Not all paint brushes are designed to work correctly. Unfortunately, some are just junk. Now, if I'm going to go from side to side, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my arm. It's a movement that's up at the shoulder, okay? And I'm going to move my arm from side to side. What I'm going to do side to side, I'm going to move my whole entire arm. I'm not moving a wrist, I'm not moving an elbow, I'm moving my whole shoulder. And I'm going to aim, I'm going to start over here, I'm going to aim for this side. My, my vision is going to actually be pointed down here where the X is. Okay, and if it's not pointed down there, then... Okay. So here I go, I'm going to go, I'm going to breathe out, I'm not going to, if I pull in, I hit my belly, so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go straight across, looking at the X, looking at the X, okay? And that's a really important thing to practice, and actually I'm a little bit wobbly there myself, aren't I? Okay, so here we go, we're going to go straight across, looking at the X, looking at the X, looking at the X. Now what happens if you do something like that, um, where you lift up your brush? So then what you're going to do is you're going to come back here, you're going to tap off, Let's talk about that for a second. Loading my brush in here, I'm going to come over here and just take off a little bit of excess paint. If I want to merge two lines or merge a line, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start back over here a little bit on that line and I'm going to merge them. Okay. Okay, we'll do it again. And if you see a little ball on the end of your brush, you want to make sure that um, you get rid of that. Okay, good job. Okay, next we're going to learn how to make a C shape stroke with our brush. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go C, pulling in a circle moon. Okay, reload as you need to. C, you want to let the brush finish that stroke. You come in for a close-up. C, 
let the brush finish the stroke. If I go here and I try to push the brush, A, I'm going to get this kind of pressure stroke, which is uh, something that you'll practice a little bit later. But I want to make sure that the brush finishes on its own line. And see, that's a much prettier um, stroke. Now I'm going to practice going the other way. Let the brush finish the stroke. Let the brush finish the stroke. Making sure you're fully loaded. Reload as you need to or it won't be able to finish the strokes. Okay, and finish the stroke. Okay, so we don't want to do the pressure. We want to let the brush finish those strokes nicely and evenly. Our next exercise, we're going to do a pressure um, stroke. So what we want to do is we want to practice um, pushing and lifting off. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here, push down, and lift up. Okay, And that is going to be something that's going to give you a lot of control if you understand when you are pushing. So I'm stroking down, I'm pushing down, I'm lifting up. Okay, what I don't want to see is I got a little piece of fuzzy fuzz. Okay, what I don't want to see is the brush laying down like that. Okay, that it's a pretty stroke and all that kind of stuff, but it's not going to do me any good if I am laying down. So the pressure is in pushing down on the hand, not in laying back on the hand. Okay, so I'm going to stroke push down, lift up. Stroke, push down, lift up. Okay, stroke, lift down, push down, lift up. Stroke, push down, lift up. Stroke, push down, lift up. Okay, we're just calmly applying that pressure. Anytime I see a ball of fluff on the bottom of my brush or any other kind of weird thing, I want to make sure I flick that off. Now look at here. What we did here is we didn't lift up gracefully. So I applied pressure evenly and then I lifted up way too quickly. Okay, so that is not what you want to do. Okay, so we push and lift all graceful so that you can't almost see that changing. Push down, lift up. Push down, lift up. Push down, lift up. Don't fall asleep. Okay, push down, lift up. Okay, now that we did that, we're going to try it side to side. Okay, now this is going to be one of those things, one of the things that I think is real interesting. It's much easier if you have a line drawn for yourself when you're trying to do things like this. So keep your eye on the goal. This one we're going to do more in a row. Okay, we may only be able to get half the distance depending on the liquid and the moisture and all that, but we're going to go side to side, the exact same as up here, but we're going to do this stroke. So we're going to line, push down, lift up, line, push down, lift up, line, push down, lift up. Okay, reload our brush. Line, push down, lift up, line, push down, lift up, line, push down, lift up. Okay, focusing on the side-to-side -side movement, focusing on your breathing, focusing on making just the nicest, cleanest line that you can. Line, push down harder, maybe. Oh, look at that. That's just a terrible one. Okay, line, push down, lift up. Line, push down, lift up. Okay, when we're pressing, if you're getting these jiggity-jaggity lines like that, then what we have to do is we have to 
put on our glasses and we need to make sure that our brush is straight up and down line press lifting gently line press lifting gently and I got my hand stuck down here on the paper so we'll make sure that we stop and we pick up that line press lifting gently okay much cleaner lines so that's our practice this is I can honestly say to you that this is probably not something that I've ever seen executed in any kind of design but the ability to change where you're pressing as you're painting is important so we we'll practice this just as an exercise of changing the intensity of your lining okay that's more of this is not so much like stroke work as it is practicing using your brush in ways that it needs to be used now our next step is going to be to take we're going to load our brush and then we are going to tip our brush into the heavier paint and we're going to do a pressure stroke okay this is going to be kind of like a comma stroke Right, we have to tip it because there's just no body to this um, brush. Get rid of that little ball of water. We're going to rest our brush and then we're going to lift up to a point. We'll reload each time. We're going to rest our brush, allowing the bristles to spread. My brush is straight up and down and lifting to a point much nicer to do these quickly. Don't pause and hesitate. Okay. Rest, lifting, and finishing. Pause. About half of my paintbrush is leaning down on the ground, but it's not from me laying my brush down, it's from me pushing down. Okay, push, lift, pulling towards yourself, you always line, pulling towards yourself, push, lift, push, rest, lifting as you go. Push, Rest, lifting as you go. Push, rest, lifting as you go. Reloading each time. And just get into the, the flow of this. It doesn't take but a few minutes and you will watch yourself. You will be such a confident painter by the time you are done just doing these exercises for a few days even. Press, lifting, up. Don't do it in the speed race. You don't want to like slap it down there and lift it up. Now that's got a lot of heavy body in the middle but I didn't want this skinny front and I didn't want this wide middle. What I want is a bigger end and a skinnier getting more gradual. Okay, so this is not the way to do it. So we don't do it in a hurry. No, nope. press, but we don't do it slow either. Something in the middle. It's perfect. Okay, one of the things that you can use your painting for is what they call cross hatching. And this is a very excellent embellishment thing, um, exercise. And it's a good use of your beginning skills up at the top where you did the uh, beginning liner work. So what we're going to do is we're going to do straight cross hatching and then we're going to do curved cross hatching. Cross hatching is practicing doing skinny lines evenly spaced in a row. I'll reload as I need to. Adding water. Now I'm pulling more water and paint into my mix. Then I'll turn my piece and I'll add the other direction cross hatches trying striving for evenness. Okay, so we repeat, looking for even lines, straight even lines. Okay, 
Okay, so this is exactly the same thing that you did earlier. It's just doing it, um, practicing even spacing. But one thing I would like to point out is if you get a little warble, that line right there has a little warble to it. If you get a little warble, you don't worry about it. You just ignore it, and it, as long as it's not like a warble, then um, you won't see it. So don't don't get all anal on yourself where you sit there and you go, oh my God, you know that's one line. It's awful. In the grand scope of your whole painting, you probably won't see that. Um, so we try not to look at microscopic problems. Now notice I'm not pressing, I'm not giving any pressure to my painting. I'm just doing even, thin line work. And you can use this to embellish lettering, um, lace work on ornaments, all manner of things. Even, 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 even. More than anything, even. You can change the angle of your strokes and that will change the look of it. If you tighten up the angles and make them be a little bit skinnier, then you won't have the boxy look of that. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do the curved cross hatching. I'm going to add lines. Okay, we'll add those lines. Go ahead and draw your lines. Excellent. Now you're using the skills that you learned up here with the C stroke. Doesn't matter what shape you make them. You can make them in any shape under the sun. Now we're going to fill those lines that we made with our cross hatching. Okay, and this time what we're going to do is we're going to do shape following. So everything that I do is going to follow the shape of the cross hatching, getting smaller and smaller. And then I can make room for myself here. We're going to follow this line. Okay, and that is graceful and beautiful and wonderful. So you want to practice this one because this is just adds such loveliness to your painting. Cross hatch, cross hatch, cross hatch. You can do this as a folk art type thing where you add it as kind of a touch of whimsy. If you were doing patches on, on little clothes or things like that, or you could put it on fruit. You could do it in backgrounds. You can fill in spaces. Okay, and then we fill in. Filling in. Okay, and then we're going to do our final one. And now we cross hatch the other way to finish up our exercise. Rest your hand as you get in the middle of this. If you start feeling that you're a little bit tired, don't go too far. Okay, I mean, you don't want to give yourself carpal tunnel practicing your strokes. Don't do them all in the same day. All right, doing a review, we're going to make sure that we are using our water in our paintbrush or in our paint, a thin, inky consistency, drying off our ferrule. We're going to use our good posture. Our brush is going to be upright and not laying down like a pencil. We are going to anchor our hand, and we're going to remember to do that for all of these different um, exercises. Let's talk about our a shading liner work. Okay, this is a really interesting um, effect. So say we have a leaf. Maybe this is a folk art leaf. I'll put some of these down here. And you can add these onto your paper or just practice on top. We're going to do it in two ways. I think doing directional stuff and doing measured stuff is very, very important. Um, I think that helps make your skills as a painter just that much better. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do two directions. One, we're going to do the first one first, 
And what we're going to do with this, and I guess I should have probably made these just a little bit fatter, but we'll pretend like this is the tip of a leaf. What we're going to do is we're going to start with our paintbrush up here at the top, and we are going to pull these in directional lines, filling in the leaf. Okay? So I'm going to come up here, pull these in about a little over halfway, but notice that what's happening here is in the, the middle area, I stop in the middle at the middle, but on the other sides I go a little bit longer. If I did something like this, this isn't going to look as pretty. Okay, having them all even like that looks like somebody's bad haircut. Okay, we don't want a bad haircut on our little leaves. So we're going to shape following. If I need to go back, I can go back, go in the directions of, and get a little bit shorter towards the middle, in the direction of our leaf tips. Starting at the top, just nice comfortable strokes. This is also, I mean, this DVD could be almost titled How to Use Your Liner Brush and All the Different Things You Can Do With It. Okay, because there's a lot of techniques that you can do. Alright, so then we'll go on to our next row. And now what we'll do is we'll do, let's practice, let's make this be a practice, okay? Let's bring our leaf down here from the point and bring it up into a nice rounded, notice that we're letting the brush swing around here. I'm not forcing that brush. Okay, we'll bring it down from the bottom, bring it up, nice gentle oval. Notice the bend of the brush as it comes around the angle. I'm going real slow so you can see it. Okay, bring it down. Allow the brush to finish its stroke. If you don't shove the paintbrush, then you're going to have a lot better control. Allow the brush to finish its own stroke. Swing it around, pulling it down. Up from the bottom, swing it around, let that brush finish it. You'll feel the pressure on the paintbrush. After your hands stop shaking and, and you stop worrying about it, you'll feel much more confident. Push, pull around, allow it to finish. When it does the oval, it's going to get thicker in that middle, okay, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, push. I could rest this on its tippy toe, okay. Let me go on to a different piece of paper. Okay, I could do that same stroke going on its tippy toe and just line, 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 line. What you don't get is you don't get that graceful finishing. This is a much prettier line. Okay, you don't get that graceful finishing. You, this is kind of pokey looking. Okay, we definitely like this brush finished line versus a man pushing. They say the difference between um, an artist and a decorative artist is an artist pushes their paint and a decorative artist pulls the strokes. And that is the control and the wonder of saying, yes, I want to execute this right here. Okay, so now that we've got those lines drawn, we are going to decorate them. Okay, and so now with this one, you're going to do basically the same, the same effect that you did up at the, at the top on these ones, but you're going to do it a little bit wider. Shape following. I can't stress shape following enough. Okay. Shape, 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 shape following. We don't want our lines to curl. Okay. We don't want to see curling lines because look, it closes everything up. It looks like a bad thing. So what we want to see is shape, 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 following. Okay, shape, following. Pulling from the center. Shape, 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 following. 
All right, the next thing we're gonna practice is doing some strokes that kind of line up together. So we'll use the thinned paint, same as before. I've got mine pre-sketched. You're gonna be tracing over the top. Um, let's get you on camera. Now what we're gonna do is at the top of this, we wanna make sure that we use a good angle for our brush. Like I don't wanna be tweaking my arm this way when I am more natural this way. Okay, and then we're gonna start at the top tweak myself just a little bit further and I'm going to pull and as I come down on the little the middle part we're going to push and then off left okay very graceful one fluid stroke okay then we're going to come down here we're going to do the, uh, I see a little bit of thick paint on my brush push I'm going to press and release this is much prettier if you're breathing right, not worrying about stuff. Okay, not worrying about my lines too much. We do want this to line up. What should happen here is you should have um, even pretty spaces in between that. Okay, as you're practicing, you want to just give yourself permission to just be like, yeah, hey, whatever. But as you're practicing, that's why you're going to be on paper so that you can practice making those lines line up a little bit better, a little bit more elegant, a little bit prettier. Press, push, left, much nicer. Okay, now I'm a little bit close here with my line, so I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra room. Always erase the line and stroke. That's much nicer. Okay, now we're going to turn our paper. We're going to go the other direction. Okay, so you've got to turn your piece to get the right angle. I'm going to press and lift and ran out of paint there at the end. Do you see that? That means my paint's just a little too dry. Okay, one of the things that I am a fan of, now if I wanted to fix this stroke, I would come in here, press and lift. Okay. One of the things I'm a fan of is showing every one of my flaws. Um, I think if you guys don't know that um, that everybody that paints has flaws, then you're going to think that you have to start off perfect. Pressing and lifting. So I think it's much more valuable for you to see the stuff that goes wrong. Push and lift. Okay. Pressing, push, 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 and lifting. Okay. Press and lift. Press and lift. There we go. always reloading paint and reloading water as I need it in my puddle. This is what my puddle is looking like. So if your puddle is looking similar, I reload my brush all the way. I dry everything out and I do these little short flicks to get the extra paint off of the tip of my brush. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is a comma stroke. Now you did this, the circular strokes on the last sheet. But this one, what we're going to do is we're going to add pressure. So we're going to stroke, thin, press, lift. Okay. Stroke, thin, press, lift. Stroke, thin, pressure right there in the middle. Allow the brush to swing out and lift. Press. Now let's go the other direction. Reverse ourselves. Don't feel weird. Did you see that right here? That was me not allowing the brush to finish its job. Don't feel like you're weird if you have a right hand or a left hand stroke. 
allow yourself to be one way or the other and just adjust your paper or your project to suit. Like I could very easily, I'm doing it on every one of these, can very easily flip my paper over and finish these strokes doing the other way. However, that's not what this is all about. This is about practicing so that you get better. And so I'm going to practice this again. And I'll go back over it again and again and again. And allow it to come up. And we're going to lift and da -da -da. that's better. And see what I did though. Okay, well, let's talk about this. Okay, when we're doing our strokes, thankfully, you know, you're going to have one that's executed just a little better than this to, to practice on. But as I got down here and I started thinking about this, then what I was doing was I was pressing and hesitating and pausing and that was not graceful. I'd almost rather have it whipped off the edge, edge like that. Okay, push and lift and finish the stroke. Much nicer. So you see we can all improve. Okay, our next technique is one of my favorites um, where I shine more than anything and that's going to be our vines. Now what I want to do with our vines is we're going to, this is just so like no right or wrong answer, we're going to do a pressure and lifting type thing and we're also going to wiggle our brush in between our fingers. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to push and then I'm going to twist and I'm going to lift and push and twist and lift. Okay, that's how you make the basis of your vine. Then you go back and you evaluate your vine. Okay, and you're going to say, now obviously you don't want to pull a branch into um, these, like this middle area right here. But I want to take a nugget or a place where I have these protrusions and I want to make that be a, a little vine kind of thing. That's like a natural area to make a vine. Okay, now we have our little vine, and it's all using pressure strokes. So I'm going to press, twist, as jiggity jaggedy goofy looking as we can get. And we'll bring off the little offshoots. There we go. Press, twist, whoops. <laughs> all right, what do you do when you do something like that? That's called losing it, right? Well, first of all, what I would do if I was not on paper is I would take it off with a Q-tip. Okay, but we'll just pretend like we didn't just lose it, and we'll make that be a lovely vine. Okay, so not too bad a recovery. Now on all of these little vines, you can take off little extra branches wherever they bend and twist. You could give them extra, extra little branchy type things. Okay, the next step that we're going to take in our useful liner brush um, techniques is we're going to come down here and we're going to make ourselves some branches. Okay, so this case we're going to go pressure. Branches get thinner as they come to the point. So we'll make a series of thick, thin kinds of branches. Now obviously they wouldn't be quite so stylized. Press, lift, press, lift. That's something to keep in mind when you're lining your branches. You never want to line your branch from the end in. You want to line your branch from the body of it down and out. You want to keep your brush comfortable in your hand. Okay, lining, lining, lining. Okay, this is just the foundation for our bows, but we're learning something very valuable about how to stroke a branch. Just never, ever, 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 ever want to start it at the ends because your brush gets naturally skinnier as you finish a stroke. 
Okay, now this one you're going to need a little bit thinner consistency paint. Add a little bit more water. Okay, and we need to turn our paintbrush or turn our project or our practice sheet so that it's a comfortable angle. And we are going to make a series of little tiny little curved, slightly curved strokes. You gotta turn it each time. You gotta keep it turning. Curving, 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 curving. Okay, now I'm gonna need to adjust that angle. Oop. My paper and my palette are not agreeing with each other. Got to adjust the angle. If you try to line in an awkward angle, you won't have a pretty line. Reload your paint as needed and repeat the process. And notice that we are lining from the back end of that branch and not from the front end of the branch because it's going to be naturally thicker where growth is older. This would be the same kind of effect for eyelashes and things like that. Okay, just repeating. Always turn your piece to get a comfortable angle. Use a comfortable grip on your brush. Don't do a death grip. If you have a death grip, then you're going to be sorry because you will get a very sore hand. have a good height adjustment on your chair. As you are um, painting, now see I didn't turn my brush, I didn't turn my project and so I got a little bit of an awkward line on that. finishing up. Now the one thing you don't ever want to do is really straight bow branches. What I like to do when I'm doing my bow branches is I like to um, layer them. And you never want to worry about them layering exactly where the other one is. Okay, so you'll have um, bow branches that are just overlap and stuff and it gives a nice thick bow branch kind of look. Okay, so we're getting a third level of liner brush. This is going to be much more challenging. We're going to make sure that we review. We need um, inky paint. We need our hand anchored. We need our posture upright. Um, if you need, if you see a ball of paint on your brush, just mark it off on your palette just a little bit just to get rid of that excess. Um, and you can review the beginning part of the liner DVD. Okay, the thicker your paint, the less flow you're going to have. Make sure you get your glasses on. Okay, let's go up here at the top. We're going to talk about alphabets. Okay, with our alphabet, drawing off my ferrule, um, with our alphabets, we want to stroke in a direction that's going to be comfortable. You cannot write the whole entire A um, in one fell swoop without taking your brush off. So we have to do it in, um, in correct form. So what we're going to do is we're going to start it here at the top. We're going to press and lift. Recognize that stroke from page two over there. Start at the top, stroke, graceful line. Notice how pretty that line is when we finish and lift off. And then our stroke going across is going to be just a straight pressure stroke. I apparently have lost the ability to speak. Okay, our B is going to be nice even pressure there. And then it's going to come out over here and press 
let it finish. Got to get a little bit more paint. Okay, come out from the middle and allow that stroke to finish. Okay. Okay, the C is going to be, we can start with a little curly Q if we want to and bring it around, allowing that brush to finish and then pressing into the C and allowing that to finish. Okay, start again. A is press, lifting as we get to the bottom. Press, lifting a natural flow and warm across. Nice, graceful arching. The B is straight and even pressure. And then I'm going to make that top a little bit smaller this time and bring that bottom a little bit wider and bring it in for a little curl. You can do just countless things once you know how to use your liner brush. So we'll bring our seed top in and press and bring it into our seed. There we go. Would have helped if you could have seen that scene. I'm going to put a line. I've got my straight edge and I've got a line. This next exercise is one that I want you to have a line for because when you see, you'll be like, oh, thank God I have a line. All right, this next exercise is going to be a pressure type situation as well, and it's going to be um, your comma strokes. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to stroke them coming towards ourselves. Okay, and we're going to bring our stroke off the top, pressing and bringing it below the line and coming back up to touch the line. Okay, same thing again. Very close together or touching, and then press, keeping those the similar distance. Okay, by having that line in the middle of it, you're ensuring that you're going to be able to do this um, very evenly. And you could even make yourself a line on the top and the bottom to make sure that your arch goes up and down to the correct lines. If we flatten these out, they'll look like little ropes. We deepen them, they'll look like braid. Okay, continuously running in a line, they're a beautiful border. Using up to the top, pressing down, allowing the brush to finish the stroke and lift off. Use your glasses and lift. Stroke, press, and lift. That one's a little shallow. Okay. Our next set, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it at an angle. All right, so I'll get my angle on the right, get the right angle going. And maybe we'll do it coming off the other way. Press, lift, finish. Okay. Under, over, under. It's like we're weaving a stitch. And then maybe we'll go the other way. Practice going both ways. Being able to be ambidextrous when you paint is so helpful. So practice going both ways, even if your brush doesn't naturally want to do that. Press, stroke, press. Okay, now that you can do all these pressure strokes, let's practice finishing a circle. Okay, so in our circle, we're going to start on the outside. We're going to start at the top, wherever your top is, so you can rotate your paper if you need to. And we're going to start up here. We're going to allow this brush just to finish 
and going gracefully smaller and smaller. Okay, make sure you have enough paint on your brush. Begin allowing the brush to bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, lifting and smaller. Brush, allowing that circle just to finish itself. I'm guiding with my hand, not so much with my fingers. Start losing, if I start using my fingers and you see what happened just there, I start getting out of control a little bit. Pressing and lifting and just using, I'm using my shoulder. Lifting up and finish, yay. Once again, because we want it to be gracefully tinier, we want to not bring, um, we want to start at the outside and allow it to get smaller and smaller to the inside. That's a more natural look. Allowing that brush just to finish. Ta-da. Now, one of the things that people find the most difficult are, um, are what do you call these things? Tendrils. Okay, and one teacher that I had, I want to say it was Mary Jane Todd, um, she had a wonderful thing that she called MMWW. Okay, and so what she would do is she would take her brush and she would go M, and you gotta let that twist. Now, see, this is where we don't want to go, right there. Okay, this is, okay, um, this is because I didn't allow the brush to finish, okay, that was me forcing. Okay, so give myself my graceful talk. Okay, so we're going to allow the brush to finish and we're going to be just light on our feet, very, very light. So light, bring it around, and WW. So come back again. M M W W M M W W. Okay, and that is just this lovely way to make a tendril that you know. M M M W W. Okay, I'm bringing it down to the bottom of the page. Kind of bringing our lessons together. We're going to take and do a couple of stroke work things together and combine them and see what we can't make out of them, just as a whimsical little folk art expression. So we're going to take some of these S strokes, and maybe one more, okay, and we're going to line across the top and across the bottom, and we're going to take our cross hatching. Notice that on my cross hatching, I don't worry about touching the rim and things like that. We're going to take a couple of scrolls, remembering to turn our brush so that we get the right angle. We're going to do a couple of straight stems. Okay, and then we're going to take our curly cues, allowing the brush to finish the job, practicing your pressure. Ta da! Okay. We don't want to push. There. Therein lies the crux, is you want to allow the brush to finish doing its job. Okay, when we push, we get an unfinished thing. So we can take our little basket of little flowers and take a little bit of our spatters to embellish our line work. And 
and you have a little picture that you've made.